Hello and welcome to Script Tonight Reacts. I'm Script Tonight. Today we're going to be watching season two, episode seven of The Expanse, and this episode is called The Seventh Man. It is not even 24 hours since I watched episode six. I've just had to go on and um and watch the next episode because it's addictive. That's that's what I'm getting from this program now. It's addictive and every episode is ending with something that makes me so hungry for the next episode. I'm struggling to stop and move on to other things. So this, I was supposed to do a reaction for The Handmaid's Tale today. That's just gone out the window because I realised I wouldn't actually be able to concentrate because I really want to <laughs> watch this episode. And also I'm kind of stuck in it because I was, I was having to think about what happened and I realised that there had been a, a slight flaw in my thinking around trying to calculate kind of who was responsible for things in the past. So bear with me. So a couple of thoughts came to mind. One, we have not seen Anderson Dawes in forever. Which makes me think he's got something to do with what's going on because of the fact that he's so out of the conversation that he doesn't spring to mind as a potential player in this game anymore when actually the last time we encountered him he was a major player in the game he'd already taken over the police on series and and we knew that he was behind the um interception with julie mao it wouldn't be out of this world to think that Dawes and mao have a relationship and that doesn't even need to be something that started after he moved over to Erin Wright. Because they're not mutually exclusive things. And I've been having them in my mind as mutually exclusive. So when we found out it was Mao and Erin Wright and, it, and the stuff happened on um, Phoebe, I was like, all right, it's nothing to do with Mars. And it's nothing to do with the Belters. But the more I think about it, I'm like, but it doesn't rule out their involvement. We don't know who's involved, in what way, and even what awareness they have of other people's role in what's happening. Well, you do, but I don't. But I've been acting as if the moment one person is identified as being responsible for something, that rules out anyone else's responsibility for anything. And I think that, I think that was wrong. So there's that. Then I was thinking about the issue of how did the proto-molecule get somehow transport across space and land on, on Ganymede? But it might not have had to. It could have already been on Ganymede. Because I've assumed that they were sent to protect Ganymede, a soybean, a soybean farm because Sutton was pure than pure and no one you know in Mars had a clue what was going on they were just trying to and that all might still be the case but it's also the case that they could not be protecting soybeans they could be protecting another research laboratory like Phoebe which would make much more sense and of course no one would have been able to tell our grunts that our little Martian grunts that we've been following and maybe Sutton knew maybe Sutton didn't know it wouldn't surprise me either way but the more I think about it the more it makes sense to have the idea that actually what's going on at Ganymede was potentially another research station and what we saw was an outbreak again which would make sense everywhere the protomolecule is harvested we've had an outbreak so then what happened in the sky would also make more sense because it could have been them shutting shit down while also creating the conditions where Mars and Earth are each other too busy being at each other's throats to even question wider implications. And if that's the case, then the protomolecule being at the end actually could have taken the form of one of the other grants 
which would make some sense of Bobby's face when she was like, so that's kind of where it got. So that was some other thoughts that came to mind. I don't know if any of those are, are true or not, but I thought there's mu there are actually so many more possibilities than I even at first thought about this. And I mean, if I was willing to be completely stupid, I'd give you 10 more theories, but they just get progressively more kind of out there. Um, the other thing I've been thinking about was Epstein. Um, so I, had, I think it, someone on Patreon had said to me, because Patreon gets it before you guys, had said, oh, you didn't say anything about Epstein. And I was like, I didn't really have anything to say because I don't have no idea yet what the repercussions of that story are. And so when I'm doing the view, I tend to focus on the things that I understand as game changers. And I'll tend to put notes in for the things that I go, just so you know, I've noticed this, but I've got no massive opinion on it yet because I need more information that's how I felt about Epstein I don't actually know if he's alive or dead we didn't see him die he's telling us a story which people generally do when they're still alive but I appreciate that you know that's just how we tell stories fictionally sometimes I didn't get the feeling that he was dead watching it so I wasn't like sad and heartbroken of like oh what a terrible sacrifice he's made because it didn't feel particularly like he was making one. I felt like he was really where he wanted to be. I know he loved Katie and wanted to make Martian babies. But I also know the character type, which is that driven. That it's like, this guy is changing the world. And we know he did, because we've seen on the computer that Naomi was on when she was doing the missiles. That it, they were using the Epstein drive. Um, we also had the reference to it from the, you know, the, jet, the sciencey guy. Um, at the UN so I'm just kind of like wow the biggest thing that struck me from that whole thing other than it being amazing like you saw my reaction I loved every minute of the Epstein story is that single line that was like the good thing and the bad thing about technology is it changes everything and I for me that felt like one of those lines that like when I'm further down the road with the show will be like one of the standout lines you know often in shows there are these lines that mean everything like in Game of Thrones you've got you know when you play the Game of Thrones you win or you die or you know chaos is a ladder I feel like there are some lines in this show which are, are going to be like that um and I think that one for me once I relearn it is is going to be one I felt like that was really significant so I'm interested to see if that was just a capsule story or if we're now going to, over over the course of the show, find out more about him, what actually happened. Did he die? Did he somehow miraculously make it back? So that's where I am. We've got fairly a few fairly explosive situations going on. We've got Naomi lying about having blown up the protein molecule. Oh, that was the other thing as well that hooked me back into Anderson and Dawes, was that I'd also ruled out Naomi's part in everything about the can and all of that stuff in the, in the early days. I'm keeping an eye on Naomi. I think partly because I feel like this show has the potential to take something that happened in, like, episode two, double bluff the fuck out of me, and then go, ha-ha! <laughs> at some point and I I just feel it in my water at the moment with this that like we're on the verge of finding out something truly explosive and all of the elements are there I think I can point to what those elements are but I cannot yet assemble them and I honestly don't know if that's my brain deliberately shielding me because I just really want to watch it and get blown away and I'm fine with that. Good that my brain literally does work like that. It's like, no, you don't want to. Just give that one a note. So that said, we are going to get into this episode, season two, episode seven of The Expanse. Let's have at it. Say to the god of death, Draper. Not today. (sighs) 
and it was blood. What is it? All we know is that fire from UNN and MCRN forces hit one of our orbital mirrors, which crashed into the station and several ag domes. We estimate over 3,000 dead and thousands more wounded. Fuck. Ganymede is the breadbasket of the outer planets. Without us, millions will go hungry. This is a humanitarian crisis of epic proportions. We need to choose an appropriate Martian target in response. Christian? We invite Mars to a peace summit. A peace summit? And what? Foot massages, too? Trust me, we Mars need... wants this worse than we do. The whole system has been a tinderbox since Eris. No one can explain it. Mars thinks it's our weapon, we think it's theirs. We lost on Ganymede, definitively. When losers seek peace, they look even weaker. Forty years ago, the Vesta blockade was the closest we ever got to the brink. You know why we barely avoided mutual extinction? Because the man sitting in that chair decided to talk instead of shoot. It's time to step back before we're all wandering through the rubble, defending ourselves with rocks and sticks. You'll never sell it to the Security Council. You will sell it because you saved Earth from Eris. We all know who really did that. Mm. And whom do I serve? Mm. Why didn't you ever run for office? I like getting shit done. <laughs> and I like to keep my head attached to my neck. Your father was smart. You're smarter. <laughs> Ganymede Station refugee ships are now arriving at docks three and seven. And despite the circumstances, it'll be good to see you again, Satara. There he Until is. Then. He's not working with her. Separately. Pause. See, this is coming back to my line. Of, I nearly said this earlier, and then I, I won't edit it out now, so you'll see me saying it. I cut off because I, everyone calls me conspiracy theorist when I start. I think I was wondering if there has been a subplot involving just Belters, as in Naomi reaching out to Kamina with dolls that Fred Johnson is perhaps not a part of. And that was the and that was what Naomi was talking about last episode when she said, you know, belters have to look us belters have to look out for each other. Cause no one else will. Which is like manifestly untrue given that she's in a relationship with an Earther and Kamina is working with an Earther. You know, why would Naomi say that at that moment if she wasn't trying to communicate something? I uh, I can't put it all together, but something something's cooking, and I'm looking forward to finding out what it is. So, play. Yeah, she's looking dodgy as fuck. Oh, Baltalada, welcome on City. That's so weird. Anderson does. I can't have to pay tribute to him every time we parked on series. You think that's why Bells love him? Those put all of those bribes back into the neighborhood. Yeah, now he's practically running series. About time the Belter was. One each. Good person. <laughs> the Belters would also benefit from the protein molecule, wouldn't they? Because they have to live in space. And they, they're spending all this time craving Earth, a planet that, like, no longer is hospitable to them because, like, their physical attributes have changed, you know, due to living in low gravity. So they'd benefit from the protein molecule because then they could find, they could develop their own species. Maybe that was the point all along. That's why Anderson Dawes sent... Julie Mao to intercept the Anubis. Do you know what I mean? Wow, okay. 
Play. I said one each. Back off. Leave my mother alone! You leave her alone! Oh. Wow. He's amazing. Where's Chatham, I mean? Just such a good actor. Can we get you anything? A porterhouse. <laughs> Medium rare. <laughs> okay, I'll see what I can do. For the kids to accept her that she's a vegan. Gunny, I'm sorry to be the one to tell you, but no one from your team made it. What happened? I was hoping you could tell us. So fate. All lost with your team under the mirror rays. Gunny, you're the only one who survived. Our only eyes and ears on what happened down there. You're never gonna believe her. Six blues. They were coming right at us. Then we got jammed. Oh crap. Six blues charging you? No. No wait, there was a seventh. Lieutenant Sutton, he, he would have picked up on it. He was, he was Lieutenant on Lieutenant Sutton was killed with 11 others on this run. Oh my God. No. She's bleeding again. Nurse, we need a sedative. It's all right, then. Excited and sad all at the same time, and it's complicated. <laughs> Pause, there's gonna be a million pauses in this episode, I tell you. Okay, so I'm sad because I just can't imagine having to wake up like that and be told all your teammates dead. It just. Oh. and her mentor. Just fucking brutal. Okay, but the seventh man. So there were six. And then came the seventh. So did the seventh, was the seventh the one where they turned around? And I noticed that they were shooting in the other direction. But I didn't spot that there was an additional being there. So that being is the protomolecule, I suspect. Or... We're in for another surprise, which I'm up for either way, so... Play. Dr. Cortazar, they changed your brain with that procedure. That's f forever, right? It was temporary at first. Dresden never coerced any of us. It was like a terrible storm had lifted. It was painless, you know, the procedure, if you're interested. Today, there was this boy that looked at me like I was a monster. It made me remember when I was that boy. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. You want to be that real boy again, to feel how you felt before the world broke you. But you cauterized all that in order to survive. Mm -hmm. You don't want that back again. Stomp out those last embers and you'll be free of it. We are about to rewrite the entire story of humanity. And if you like, you can be a part of that too. I can help you. Uh -oh. I know how. <sighs> Tough call. Thank you all for your presence today. First arrows. Now Ganymede. Earth and Mars have pushed themselves to the brink. And they'll have to find a path to peace or risk mutual annihilation. The OPA just saved Earth. And if that is not sufficient enough to earn their respect, we have their missiles. <laughs> the belt needs a born belter to be its voice. Anderson Dawes should represent us. <laughs> Excuse me, no disrespect. <laughs> I just imagine the look on the inner's faces when they see who is sitting across the table from them. <laughs> I will be honored to represent the bell. It's a beautiful dream he has, huh? Earth and Mars at peace. And the bell 
equal partners in that piece. What's he up to? Is it too much an Urta's dream? I do not doubt his heart. But as much as I fear war between Earth and Mars, I fear the peace more. For that is when they will turn their sights back on all of us. Earthers cannot look upon a thing but wonder who it belongs to, huh? Mm. To make it their possession. Possession is nine tenths of the law, they say. But that is not the way of the bell. They see us as their possessions. Animals to test their new weapons on. And make no mistake, they will do it again. We killed the madman who made that weapon. We've seen arrows burn up into Venus. Earth knows they don't want another arrows any more than we do. Johnson says that we are safe. <laughs> but I say, once a thing is written, in the A for seven, it is forever. I was on Eros. Shit. I was on Eros. Hell no! And I was there when we killed the bastards who did. It was a small group. We believe not working on behalf of any government. And I think Fred is right. The threat has been eliminated. And those missiles you have, Earth and Mars have pointed those damn things at each other for over a hundred years. So let's give them back. Yes. James Holden, huh? Yes. Yes. You see, one by one, the best Earth has to offer us are coming to our fight. Mm -hmm. But I think he is an uh, idealist, my friend. And idealism is a luxury of the inner planets. But I agree with you about the missiles. Oh, for Lotus, no, no, we divide them amongst the factions. No, you fucking don't. The missiles are useless to us. Oh. But. but you are on Eros too, yeah? You think this is over? I hope that it is. Oh my god! I have a feeling Fred and Dawes have a history. Which is why you should have stayed out of it. Mm. Fred needed backup. Not from you. Do you know what everyone saw in there? Do you know what Anderson Dawes saw in there? You and Fred Johnson, two big noise earthers telling belters how they should run the belt. I'm on this goddamn thing together and everyone keeps telling me to pick a side. Those fuckers who did Eros sure as hell picked a side. If Eros rammed into Earth, wiped out half of your people, mm. then you'd know. You ever been to Earth? Soon enough, sir. I trained in 1G since I could walk, but it's different when you're there. This is oppressive pull down. It pulls their spirits down with it. I look forward to experiencing it firsthand. Oh! Like Lopez. I love this shit. Stephen Blues were charging at us. About two clicks out. So seven UN Marines started charging and shooting at you. What's weird is that there was only seven of them. It's it's less than a third of their full garrison. Why would they... Let's just focus on the facts. The egg drone. Before the blues were charging at us, Hillman spotted a stray egg drone over our position. Y you need to check that drone's feet. We'll certainly look into that. They were firing at us. They... But they were shooting backwards. They jammed our comms. I saw ships engaging in orbit. Fucking Earth has attacked us. They want a war. We'll give 
saved him a goddamn war. I don't think that's what happened. Oh, I could use one of these. You've inspired the belt. Well, we're all in this together. That is a story. Mm -hmm. I like it. It's the truth. The truth is, it's never what you expect it to be, eh? You mean like all Earthers aren't scumbags? And some Belters are just full of shit? I didn't say it was the whole story. Just a useful part. What do you want? <laughs> you want to paint me as one of the bad guys because I'm an Earther? Have a great time. Go and buy. Don't get distracted by that. It will just confuse you. <laughs> Fred Johnson is tactical. He can't think any other way. He wouldn't offer me up to the inner planets as his errand boy or be willing to return Earth's missiles so readily unless he had another card to play. Hmm. None that we know of. Now get off my ship. You remind me of someone. <laughs> Just missing the hat, that's all. Miller, I thought so. Belters will never unify under Fred Johnson's flag. True Sitara. Earth will never forgive him for the past. And after the Norvu, his days on Tycho are numbered. Any weapon that Fred Johnson has is vulnerable. We are in this together. Otherwise, we're all lost. Ah. Ugh. Pause. Just a minute. Because he called Kamina Sitara and he called Naomi Sitara. So I write in that the Belter Creole is Baratna, is brother, and Sitara is sister. Is that right? I'm, I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to pick it up as I go. Play. You know we can get you a new suit. Fuck off. Mm -hmm. Sorry, sir. <laughs> no disrespect intended. That is Captain Martins. Who I knew him from? Chaplin. <laughs> When I marked my 2790 as none, I was serious. Well, don't worry, I'm not here to proselytize. You went through something pretty horrible down there. Whatever you're feeling is okay. I'm a Marine, I'll be fine. Have you checked that drone's feed yet? No, we were on high alert for anything in that area. There was no drone over your position. There fucking was. No, no, that's not right. I saw it. You think I'm making it up? No, no. I believe you saw something. And what do you think it saw? What did you see, Bobby? Come on, Bobs. An alien! I can't remember. Okay. It's okay. We can help you with that. They're gonna whack her full of, like, truth serum or something, so she just says it. We've come a long way since our loading docks on Ceres, eh, Molly? You don't get to call me that anymore, pam pa. Mm. You. The one really running things around here. We need you back home. It's hard to find good people. I prefer it here. Constipated, you suck a stone to get things moving. If you see other problem, you shove that rock up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. If we're going to reminisce, let's at least get a drink, huh? Those two Fred Johnson's secret weapon. I want to see this. Give me a flashback. Six Marines headed our way, closing fast. Who's the sixth? And the seventh, bringing up the rear. Gunny, focus. A seventh man was bringing up the rear? The seventh man, he was chasing them. The UN Marines, they weren't firing at us. Yeah. They were shooting I behind said them the line. at him. Then what happened? We formed a line. I'm so sorry. Sergeant. That's when I saw the drug. Was waiting. Continue. That's a 
in order. What the fuck? The Stevens man, he wasn't wearing a vac suit. That's enough. Fucking hell. Pause. I'm no closer to understanding what that thing was. Oh my god, this fucking... Play. He's getting new data. He says it's talking to him. He says there's more proto-molecule out there. Well, Phoebe's gone. We drove arrows into Venus. We killed it. Apparently not all of it. Well, does he know where? Not yet. But he's gonna find out. And then what? And then we'll have it, and Cortazar will help us understand it. The nightmare starts over. What the fuck? If the belt has the proto-molecule, no one will ever use it against us again. You'll use it against yourselves. Diogo Harari. Forgive the intrusion. And then you fought alongside Josephus Miller, huh? Yeah, yeah. Piranhas. And you were on Eros with him, too. And before, on that Earth station? Yeah, yeah. With Miller, too. I better keep my eye on you. Soon your legend will be better than mine. Must have been a great raid. Fred Johnson just want people. Scientists. What for, do you paint, sir? It's hard to feel we matter out here, isn't it? The distances are so vast. It's hard to believe that we can make a difference. He's good at what he does, mind, isn't he? In recognition of your extraordinary service to Mars, MCRN Command has awarded you the Purple Heart. Wow. Thank you, sir. After the shit show on Ganymede, Earth and Mars are meeting for an emergency summit. You will tell them your story. Uh, tensions were high. Uh, in the confusion of a communications blackout, your team fired first. Sir? Oh. I don't know. They fired first. Maybe not at us, but they definitely fired first. Sergeant, this is bigger than you. you I know I'm not wrong about that. That thing was driving them I forward. I don't want to hear any more talk about a thing, Gunny. Are we clear? <sighs> yes, sir. You know what I remember most about Earth, Gunny? I don't see you gonna tell me a fucking story now to sell me on this bullshit. Mm -hmm. Sir. It's all right, Gunny. The UN has demanded your direct testimony. When you get there, you'll tell them your story. When I get there, Sergeant, you you're going to. <laughs> wow. Pause. So I'm hoping either Draper tells the truth, because I can imagine her like getting really pissed off under questioning. And just being like, fuck it. I'm I'm done with this bullshit. She's like she's been on the edge the whole season. That's gonna be interesting to see. I'm also really keen that you know, because obviously we've got Dr. Aturby with his theory about this being about a, an alien life form anyway. So that will be in Avasarala's mind. So if somehow Draper can connect land th that piece of information on Avasarala, then there's an opportunity there to actually start having both sides deal with the reality of the situation rather than continue this just you know say what we have to say to avoid a war which is like it's fine in the short term but actually we would also potentially avoid a war if everyone knew what the fuck was going on mm, it's gonna be interesting anyway play This problem. She ain't asleep, is she? 
What's going on? What the fuck is happening? Where's Paolo? Oh no! Oh sh shit, they've got him! Oh no! How can I help you, Holden? Where's Cortazar? Under guard in his cell. I'm in his cell right now. He's gone. So are his guards and his data cores. Locked down every berth. No one leaves without my authorization. Okay. Give me eyes on Dawes' ship. Dot lockdown has been ordered. Docking club release, buff 38C. Override it. Can't do. Systems locked out. Shit like that they were shooting at the um the Martian things last episode. Dawes has Codasaur, he's running. What? Dust off now! I'll be there. Let's roll. Same as with you? I don't know where he is. Oh my god. They cut their drive. Oh, shit. Standard evasive maneuvers. Widen out your visual. Try and reacquire. I don't think she wants to. Got him. Hang on. Woo! Prepare the BDCs. We cannot shoot him down. Not down. Out. Second, that Dawes can put a bullet in Cortazar's head. If it comes down to it, I go low, you go high. Open our door on my mark. Ready? Three, two, one. Decoy? Fucking decoy, now. Fuck you, Jogo. Fuck you. Don't shoot, boss man. You got me. Just me. Turn around, you little shit. Got nothing. Shit. We lost doors. He's got Corsa. They're gone. Cocking out. There are like umpteen games being played right now. But at least we've got it confirmed that the seventh man on Ganymede was what the UN N whatever were they were they were shooting backwards, like I said, they weren't shooting forwards. And they were shooting at the seventh man, which appeared out of nowhere. Who we think is what looked down on Draper at the end. I still could not understand what that face was. I don't get it. Is it not proto molecule? Is it something else? Is it someone else? Is it only going to become clear once she gets clear on what that face was? Because it looked different there. It was really blue. In, the, in episode 6 and then that look that we just saw then it almost looked like something out of the mummy and they've clearly set it up that anyone could be working with Anderson Dawes right now it could be Fred and we could be getting double bluffed it looks like 
he went and tried to get Naomi and she said no. He went to try and go and get Kamina and she said no. And then his third attempt was in through Diogo and then he succeeded. So that's what it looked like on the surface. So I'm going to take that for now. But I'm also thinking... I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But it was fucking brilliant to have Anderson Dawes back. I love the... <laughs> I love it, like, literally, the moment I knew it was he's gone, he reappeared. That was nice. I'm thrilled that Draper is going to be going and speaking to the UN Security Council, because I don't think that's going to go as planned. And I'm hoping it helps her figure out exactly what happened to her, and also gets earth and potentially mars too to understand that something is happening beyond what they believe is, is happening this is so much bigger than a turf war between mars and earth and they really are going to need to be working together as this thing moves forward whether that comes to pass or not we got confirmation that all of our martian team are dead that we know of other than draper that's it they're all gone We've been introduced to a few new Martians. We've got um, the chaplain. We've got um, the black guy who did the interrogation. I feel like we're going to see them again. But Draper is just lost because I'm not sure what we're seeing is the full thing from her memories. I think maybe she's going to get her, her memory is going to get clearer and we're going to get clearer with her maybe. But either way, I'm I'm really, really excited for it just another really really good episode three more episodes of the season i can't even imagine where this is going to go now we saw vasarala out move erin wright again in this episode by even getting the peace summit at the un together with the secretary general even though erin wright was arguing for a retaliatory measure i cannot believe that he is going to take this lying down for much longer and that makes me nervous because i feel like he's gonna do something at some point i know he's terrified we can see it in his eyes but i feel like this is not a man that's just gonna lie down and take it unless he's on a redemption arc and you know he makes his he makes his way around which would be fantastic i'd love that but i won't get my hopes up we haven't heard back from iturbi on venus so i'm looking forward to that happening Maybe that's something for a little later, maybe nine, maybe ten. I'm assuming next episode will be the Peace Summit. I'd like it to be. That was fantastic. Until the next time, bye-bye.